What's up guys, now in our last video we took a look at the Interlock A750. Now this graphics card was one that we recently picked up and we did some general performance testing on it and we were not disappointed. It was actually a great graphics card performing exceptionally well for the generation that it is. But in today's video we wanted to take it a little bit further and take a look at how it performs when it comes to ray tracing. Now, if you watched our last video, you would have seen that the Interlark A750 performed exceptionally well, particularly for the tier that it is and the generation. It is a first generation Intel Arc graphics card, and it was a little bit rocky when it was released. The drivers were a mess, and the cards just couldn't get the performance that everybody wanted. But over time, with new drivers, it's kind of improved quite a lot. We saw this with the A770, so we didn't have any early views of the A750, but we are testing it now and it performs much better than we expected. But that is when it comes to no fancies. Once you start playing with things like ray tracing, it could be a completely different story. And in today's video, that's what we're gonna check for. We're gonna check to see what the ray tracing performance is like on the A750. Is it even worth it? Or should you not even expect that kind of thing for the price of this card? Well, to find out, obviously we need to do some testing and we're gonna do a bit of live testing today. We're gonna to actually get this installed back into our test system behind me. And we're going to show you guys a couple of games that have different types and different levels of ray tracing just to see what kind of a performance dip does it get. So let's get this installed back in the system and we'll take a look. So we've got the card installed back into the system and it is running perfectly fine. It actually looks really gorgeous. It's in the system here. But of course, we're here to see its ray tracing performance. Now to find that out, I've obviously got a couple of games on here that use and utilize ray tracing. And instead of just trying to blast through as many games as we can, what I want to do is try to test it with different types of ray tracing. Games have different implementations of ray tracing, and that's what we want to try. The most simplest of the games that we've got is obviously uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, because that doesn't actually implement very much when it comes to ray tracing. It actually just has ray tracing shadows. So what we'll do is we'll start up Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and then we'll give it a go, see what happens when we enable ray tracing, when we disable it. We've obviously got MSI Afterburner running, so we'll be able to see those kind of results there, and we are capturing our display. So we're now inside the game, and it's looking as it normally does. It's a little bit washed out on this monitor. For some reason, this monitor is. It's a VA panel, it's not great, but you guys, once we start capturing, we'll be able to see the truth of it. But if we do a little bit of a run around, we'll reset some stats here. We're currently getting just the same as what we did when we did our other performance testing, around 106, 105 frames per second. Everything's running reasonably smooth. We got 1% lows of 80, nothing's really going on. And the GPU and the CPU are getting fully utilized. So that's a, a good sign for this game. If we now drop to the options we'll go to display and graphics i think ray tracing shadows under graphics and we'll turn that on we'll put it on a high setting keep everything balanced and then we'll take a look if you actually paid attention when i was switching it there the background does change so we know that it's actually enabled but i'm sure we'll know once we actually get into game reset those stats again so we have had a significant drop in performance of about 20 frames per second that's not too bad considering a lot of games will actually plummet and kill the cards off once they get ray tracing involved. But is it really worth it on Shadow of the Tomb Raider? Can you really tell a difference? Well, what we'll do is we'll do some more benchmarking in a bit and we'll see. We'll do some comparison shots and then you can see if it's actually worth it to you. But with ray tracing enabled, it's actually working perfectly fine. Now the next game we're going to test is of course Spider-Man Remastered. This game looks fantastic even without ray tracing and performed exceptionally well with the Intel Arc A750 without any kind of special tools or anything. We are currently in game running at, and we'll just double check the settings here, we are running at 1080p, V-Sync is turned off with a graphical setting of high. Again, a very balanced view when it comes to uh, gameplay quality. Then we'll just have a quick run around and see what happens. Our 1% lows do have a little bit of a fall now and again, but apart from that, the game is exceptionally playable and looks fantastic too. We are currently getting around 109 FPS and it drops a little bit as you get closer to the ground. And as we get further up, the frame rate will actually increase. But 
the game is more than playable. It's not really going to drop below 90. I think sometimes you get a little bit in the 80s on a really super busy street. But apart from that, the A750 performs really, really well on this game. But what happens when we turn on ray tracing? Now, Spider-Man, just like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, doesn't actually fully implement ray tracing across everything. It actually has ray traced reflections. So if we just drop to our settings, Let's go to display and graphics. We'll try to find it. So there we've got ray traced reflections. It's currently turned off. We will turn that on. It takes a few seconds for the game to uh, adjust it. And now that it's enabled, we can see that the reflection resolution is high. Geometry detail is high. So let's have a go and play at that. Let's see what our drop is. Reset our stats here. So we're currently now around the 75, 74 FPS while we're on the ground. We'll get back up high. Again, I'm not 100% sure what the quality difference is. I'm sure once we get to some windows and things like that and water, we'll probably tell a difference. But apart from that, we have had a slight dip in performance. We're now in the air where we were getting around 106 frames per second before, and we're running into the high 80s, low 90s. So again, ray tracing turned on actually does have a bit of a dip in performance but not as much as you would think and not as much as I actually expected with a card at this level. It seems to be running perfectly smooth and you could play this. Again, could you tell a difference if you were playing in ray tracing or not? I'm not quite sure. It's actually uh, one of those things that I think is going to start becoming a bit of a personal preference, particularly when we get to these games where it just enables one type of ray tracing or, or not. But the game is playable. It's more than playable. So you could get away with it on the A750. Now that we've seen with ray trace shadows enabled, we don't have that much of a performance hit. And with ray trace reflections in Spider Man Remastered, it's time to actually check it out with something that implements quite a lot of ray tracing. And of course, that game has to be Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077 was always a game that didn't run very well from launch, but they've completely fixed it. It runs perfectly fine now on most hardware. Until you actually enable ray tracing, you need something pretty beefy. But can the A750 actually keep up? Well, at the moment, we are currently running the game in 1080p high settings with no ray tracing uh, at all enabled. And if we drive around in a car, knowing that driving around is when we actually have the biggest performance hits in this game, we can see that we are getting an average of around 69 frames per second with currents being around 60. So again, the game is more than playable on an Intel Arc A750. Absolutely no issues running there. We're not running into any kind of memory issues. We're only running around six gigabytes of VRAM at the moment. The graphics card is fully utilized. The CPU, not so much, but it's coping well. So you get a pretty decent performance. We have got lots of little blips on our frame time graph, um, but what can you expect for this kind of price to card? You can't really feel it in the game, to be honest. It, it feels pretty smooth. So what happens when we turn this game on when it comes to ray tracing? Now for the ray tracing settings on this, we're going to actually uh, up the game a little bit. So we've got our graphic settings. We're going to go down all the way down to ray tracing. We'll enable that pretty instant on this game. We're going to be enabling ray trace reflections. We're going to turn that on. Ray trace sun shadows. We're going to turn that on. Ray trace local shadows. We're going to turn that on. And for ray traced lighting, we are going to actually set it to an ultra setting. Now, uh, the reason I've done that is because I want to actually see a bigger difference. When I actually look at the Spider-Man Remastered and when I look at the Tomb Raider, particularly when we're just doing this testing here, I couldn't really tell that much of a difference in terms of visual quality. So let's hope we can tell a bigger difference on this game. We'll just apply those settings and we'll get back into the game. Resetting our stats a little bit here, we can see that enabling ray tracing has absolutely dived our performance with a current FPS of around 30. Again, some people would say that that is actually playable and uh, fair play to them, to be honest. If they can play at that kind of rate, then uh, they're doing pretty well. But I can't really still tell the visual differences in the game, but it may be because I've just switched between them and I can't really tell. Um, but the game is playing. We're getting 30 FPS and it's fully ray traced according to the uh, settings. So yeah, you can actually play Cyberpunk 2077 with full ray tracing enabled on an Intel Arc A750. But is ray tracing actually worth it? I'm not quite sure. What we'll do is we'll do some additional testing now on all three games. We'll get you some stats and we'll talk around some of the results that we see and some of the visual quality differences that we see. 
So after some additional testing with these games, we've got some results that we can actually do some comparative discussions over. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, after a bit of testing in just normal 1080p high, we got an average of around 120 FPS. Now that was with a bit of a substantial walk around, plus a couple of runs of the built-in benchmark. And when we enabled ray tracing with a high setting, it actually plummeted all the way down to 81. Again, that was completely playable as we saw with our demo earlier. So it's probably nothing to really shout about. We did manage though to actually bring up that FPS to 90, which was a little bit of an increase when we enabled XESS with a quality setting. So remember that when you have an Intel Art graphics card, you also have access to XESS if it's available within the game. We didn't tell any kind of difference in visual quality between you running XESS and not, so that's actually a pretty decent uplift. In Spider-Man Remastered, when in running in 1080p high, we got an average of 103 frames per second, and that's with a mixture of on the ground kind of running around and swinging around on a web into the air and when we enabled ray tracing and that's just ray tracing reflections with a high setting that actually went down to 68 frames per second again completely playable in terms of game quality and the visual quality was pretty decent. Enabling XESS on that game actually managed to bring that back up to around 83 with no visual difference between it being on or off, so that's actually a pretty decent feature when it comes to the Intel Arts. Cyberpunk though was a completely different story. In 1080p high settings with no ray tracing, we managed to get an average of 72 frames per second. Now that was a lot of inside the car and outside the car. In the demo, we just showed it inside the car because that is when we have the worst frames per second in the game but when we get out the frames generally increase so it actually brings that average up but when enabling ray tracing with a high setting we got an average of 21 now that actually is now bordering unplayable so you probably wouldn't want to turn it on a little bit of a saving grace though with the uh, cyberpunk 2077 was that when you had ray tracing turned on and enabled xess with a quality setting it yeah, brought it up to a 43 fps now that is again playable in the most people's standards so you could get away with it on that now when it came to the actual games themselves and the visual quality difference between having ray tracing turned on and turned off is it actually worth the sacrifice of frames per second well that's going to be more of an objective thing. For myself, I didn't really see that much of a difference. If we take a look at some screenshots from Tomb Raider, we can see that with ray tracing turned on, the shadows are actually a little bit softer than when it isn't turned on. But is that actually worth it? Are you really going to notice it when running around and trying to survive on an island? I'm probably not so sure. It took me a while to actually see the difference between them, to be honest. And that's because I had to actually watch the background as I was switching the uh, setting on and off. But apart from that, I couldn't really tell. In Spider-Man Remastered, I couldn't really tell anything unless I was actually in front of a window or unless I was walking across some water. From a general screenshot of an area, you can't really tell much of a difference. So again, is it worth actually having the drop in frames per second? And then we of course have Cyberpunk 2077. Now Cyberpunk 2077 is one of those games that is really well known for having a big difference when enabling ray tracing. But again, I couldn't really tell that much. Now it may be just me, me myself, but if we actually compare the screenshots, you can tell there are differences in the actual quality of the picture, the certain reflection, certain lighting looks slightly better. But are you actually really going to notice this when you're driving in a really fast paced game just like that one? And most of the time when I'm actually testing that game because I don't really play the game myself, I'm generally running around or driving at high speeds and I'm not quite sure that I really see stuff. I'm sure if you actually focused in on the game, you'd probably see quite a big difference. But then you're going to be running at around 21 frames per second. So are you really going to get that good of an experience when using an Interlock A750? I'm sure if you were using a graphics card that was a much higher performance, the game could look just as nice and you could actually have some performance out of it. So what is the conclusion with the Intel Arc A750 when it comes to ray tracing? Well, the card can do it and it really does benefit from help with XESS. If you have XESS in the game, you can get a pretty decent experience with ray tracing turned on. For the games that actually implement just little bits of ray tracing, so whether it's ray tracing shadows, ray tracing reflections, I think the Intel Arc A750 can pretty much handle them perfectly fine. But when you've got those bigger games that have lots of things, the performance hit is just too much. It's not something that you want to do. But then would you want to be doing this with a graphics card that only costs £230? That's completely up to you. If you saw a major difference between those screenshots and you wanted to actually get that kind of quality, you could. You just need to enable some extra tools or at least tweak some settings around. But that brings us to the end of our look at the ray tracing capabilities of the Intel Arc A750. 
it's not something I would do personally myself, but you can do it. So that is actually pretty cool. As you may have noticed from some of the benchmarks that we ran, particularly with outray tracing, we actually kind of saw that the Intel Arc A750 is pretty close to its bigger brother when it comes to performance. And we want to do some additional testing around that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that. We're going to be doing that soon. But until then, we'll catch you in the next one.